All right, in this video, we're looking at rotation. Rotation is one of two motions that we consider actual motions. It's also one of the motions that's harder to recognize when you live on the Earth. Astronauts who take uh, trips to the International Space Station or work in space shuttles and view the Earth from outside the Earth's actual sphere, um, they can see this happen. But when you're on the Earth, it's hard to witness. So we'll talk about what's some of the evidence that supports the fact that the Earth is rotating and what does rotation really control. So let's start with what rotation is. Rotation is movement about an axis. So this is a simulation. This is not real. But you can see the Earth rotating, all right, spinning about a point. Now that point is imaginary. So when I say it's spinning about an axis, that means that there's an imaginary line that cuts through the Earth. We call this our axis. Where we get the words north and south pole from is because the Earth is a magnet. It has a magnetic field. So the top of the Earth, right, where the north pole is, that's the top of the axis. And the bottom of the Earth is the bottom of the axis. So they're not real things except in name only. If you were to think of the Earth being straight up and down, that's 90 degrees, right? If you... If you slightly tilt it from that 90 degree position 23 and a half degrees that's how the earth sits out in space so the earth rotates around that imaginary axis in a complete 360 degree rotation in 23 hours and 56 minutes now that's not what you've always known um, we round up to 24 hours uh, because it just makes it easier but there's actually some uh, rhyme and reason to this and let me show you what i mean if you were to take into account where the earth begins its rotation and where it ends its rotation that's where these two different numbers come from so let's pretend out in space here's the earth and this little white flag that's right here this little white pole represents a location that's facing the sun and if you're facing the sun it's noon where you are so if I were to let the Earth rotate once, so let, let, let the Earth rotate once, keep an eye on that noon position, the time it takes for that noon position, that little white flag, to get back to the same point that it started, right? So pointed in the same direction that it started down here. If I think of how long that takes, that's called a sidereal day and that is 23 hours and 56 minutes. So the time it takes the Earth to make one 360 degree rotation is really called a sidereal day and that's 23 hours and 56 minutes. A solar day is where we get those extra couple of minutes. A solar day is the time it takes for the Earth to get back to the position where it's facing the Sun. When the Earth was here in the beginning, and it was facing the sun, so when the Earth was here, and that little white pole was here, that white pole was facing the sun here, right? Well, now when the Earth moved in its revolution, when the white pole was here, it's no longer facing the sun. So to get to a position to face the sun again, we call that a solar day. And that's where we get our 24-hour cycle from. Things we've also discussed. The Earth is rotating from west to east at about 15 degrees per hour. And if you were to go and measure the speed, not that you ever would, it's about 1,000 miles per hour across the diameter. Pretty fast. Rotation is responsible for daily motions of the stars, the sun, the moon, and the planets. While the planets and the moons are moving on their own, their daily motion, the appearance of rising and setting, is completely an optical illusion. It's controlled by rotation. So when we talk about evidence of Earth's rotation, there's one that's really deceiving, and that's day and night. Day and night is evidence that the Earth is rotating. It's confusing because it looks like it's the sun that's moving across the sky, which controls day and night, but it's not. It's because the Earth is spinning. And as the Earth spins, that winds up changing us from one 
day at, to the next day. So as the Earth spins, you could see that terminator line that's right down the middle, right? As a location spins into that terminator, that's when it experiences nighttime. And that's when it's not facing the sun anymore. So day and night is evidence that the Earth is rotating. Another piece of evidence that the Earth is rotating is called the Coriolis effect. Now the Coriolis effect was discovered by Gustave Gaspard Coriolis in about eight, the 1800s, and he used mathematics to describe the path that projectiles took as they are fired over the Earth's surface. So if the Earth wasn't rotating, a projectile would take a straight path. It would start in one location and it would travel directly outwards along a straight line. But in reality, that's not what happens. If a projectile were to be fired on Earth, because the Earth is rotating, that projectile is going to take a curved path. It's not going to travel straight. It's actually going to wind up in a path that's slightly behind where it was, event, where it was originally launched from. And that's, if you watch in this diagram, that's because the Earth is turning underneath the projectile. All right. This is not a cannonball. This is something really over a, uh, a longer distance, a one-hour flight of a rocket. So that's the Coriolis effect. In the northern hemisphere, all right, if you look up here in the northern hemisphere, anything traveling in a straight line is curved to the right. So in all these north, this is the equator, any of these northern hemisphere locations, this is straight, this is curved to the right. Uh, even though this is pointing down, this arrow is pointing down, this is the right side of that arrow. Okay, in the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite. Things are deflected to the left. So straight, deflected to the left. And this is actually in your reference table. If you look carefully on uh, page, I believe it's page 13, uh, all of these winds, these are planetary winds, demonstrate the Coriolis effect. Uh, so in this example, wind that's traveling this way gets deflected this way in the northern hemisphere. That's to the right. Air that's traveling this way in the northern hemisphere gets deflected to the right. In the southern hemisphere, air that's traveling this way gets deflected to the left. And down here, air that's traveling this way gets deflected to the left. Also exists here on the surface ocean current maps. If you look at these arrows that are in the northern hemisphere, they're always kind of being turned to the right, whereas the arrows in the southern hemisphere are always being turned to the left. And that's all because the Earth rotates. So two MIT students set out to prove the effects of the Coriolis effect. So they created this um, apparatus, all right, almost like a seesaw, they're balanced on it, and what they wind up proving is if I toss a ball back and forth without any rotation, no spinning, I can easily get it to my partner who is across the way. But once I set this platform in motion, even though they're trying to throw it straight, I promise you they're trying to throw it, throw it straight to each other, it winds up taking a curved path because you're not aiming it for where the person's going to be you wind up aiming to where they were. So just take a look at how they are throwing it. It's, it's supposed to be in a straight path, but because the person across from them is rotating away, it winds up taking a curve. There's that curved path that we were talking about. So that's a simulation. We're meant to model how the Coriolis effect works on a spinning Earth. Okay? So if you were to track the ball now that the camera's rotating, you can see that curve. Look at, look at how that curve is so much more exaggerated, right? So that's how the Earth really works. Because the Earth is spinning, things can't be fired straight. They actually wind up curving because the Earth is curving underneath it. Just to summarize, the Coriolis effect because the Earth is rotating, projectiles follow a curved path, which is to the right in the Northern Hemisphere and to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. 
which is proof the Earth is rotating. The other example that proves the Earth is rotating is Foucault's pendulum. Here's Foucault. Uh, Leon Foucault, uh, who also lived in the 1800s, demonstrated that the Earth was rotating using a fixed free-swinging pendulum. Now, a fixed free-swinging pendulum that has weight to it, they call that a bob, uh, swings back and forth. And it swings back and forth and never runs out of energy. just kind of goes back and forth. If you were to watch uh, a pendulum swing over time and um, maybe set up some pins, kind of like in this example, it would knock down a new set of pins every hour. So you could use this to keep track of time. As the Earth rotates beneath the pendulum every hour, a new set of pins get knocked down. So this free-swinging pendulum proves that the Earth is turning underneath it because it takes a new direction every hour. If you were to use this as evidence, it appears to change direction because the Earth rotates beneath it. And if you were to let it draw a pattern, so as the pendulum swung back and forth, if you let it like sketch a pattern, it would create this star, that, that shape in the middle. That's what it would create, demonstrating this back and forth motion when in reality, if you watch the pendulum, it always appears to be going same side to side motion back and forth. You don't see it move, but if you were to track it in a sense of having it knock down pins or having it draw something, it follows this pattern. So that's it for now, and thanks for watching.